everybody, this is Anne. Do you ever start one pottery project and at the end it turns out to be something totally different than you planned? That's what happened with this video. I started with an idea to design projects that were based on the concept of creating spirals. In the end, it turned out to be a fun chip and dip fest. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create two hand-built and two wheel-thrown double bowl chip and dips. The first project will be hand-built. I use two templates and a 12-inch styrofoam half sphere. The templates are available for free in the description below this video. I rolled out and ribbed a quarter inch slab. I cut four of the triangular pattern pieces and marked the bottom point with an X. All of the X'd points will join up later. I beveled all of the sides of the triangular pieces to the left of the X. I scored each of those sides. I turned over each of the triangular templates and again beveled and scored the left sides of each piece. I placed plastic wrap inside of the sphere. I placed the first triangular piece so the x point was in the very center. I place the next quarter piece so the beveled edges meet up and connect together. I repeated this for the third side. I placed the fourth quarter piece in the mold making sure the bevels met up. I use my red rib to make tight connections and smooth the clay. I use my needle tool flat to the sphere to trim away any clay along the top edge. I placed a bat over top of it and flipped it over. I removed the sphere and the plastic and ripped the clay smooth getting rid of any seam marks. I placed the plastic back over it and covered it again with the sphere. I flipped it over and ribbed it one more time making sure it was flat to the sphere. I cut out the other template piece that will become the dip holder. I curved the template slab so it formed a pocket along the rim of the bowl and lightly traced around it to mark it. I scored both along that line and the edge of the slab. I slipped the edge of the slab, then attached it to the sphere. I used the back of my fingernail inside and outside of the seam to attach it. I then rolled a coil and worked it inside and outside of the pocket to reinforce the seam. I wet my fingers, then smoothed and rounded the rim of both the pocket and the bowl. I 
I was nervous that the pocket would pull on the clay in the firing and warp it, so I decided to ripple the rim to avoid that. I started in the center of the pocket rim and just stretched the clay around my fingers. I then applied the same rippling technique around the rest of the bowl. For the foot, I used a Diamond Core F8 handle extruder. I dragged the tool through the clay to get a unique and uniform design. I rolled out and cut a long strip of clay with the tool and attached it into a circle shape for the foot. I put the bat back over the bowl and flipped it. I cut a circle from the very bottom of the styrofoam. I cut the plastic away from the circle. I then attached the foot. I turned the piece over and let it dry completely before taking it out of the mold. To decorate it, I dipped a toothbrush into underglaze then used my finger to spray the underglaze to the surface. I didn't have time to finish this, but my plan is to glaze it with Amico C11 and fire it to cone 6. The second design also starts with a sphere, like in the first project. I prepared it in the same way. I used my needle tool to cut diagonally into the clay along the wall. There's no real right or wrong here, as every cut will result in a different looking bowl each time. Now here's where the spiral comes in. I peeled away the flap and coiled it around to create a pocket. I scored the bowl and the bottom edge of the flap. I slipped one of the edges. I then attached them together using my thumb and fingernails. I rolled several coils and attached one to the inside of the pocket and one to the outside. I used my fingers to shape and stretch out the round pocket so it looked like it was swirling around and so it was deep enough to hold the dip. Cutting away that clay strip took away part of the volume of the big bowl. I needed to add some of that back so it was deep enough to hold the chips. So I pulled the edge of the clay up and over the side of the sphere, then worked that edge down. Readjusting the clay slab creates some leeway in the bowl wall, so I could pinch the side of it upward and regain some of that interior area for the chips. I left the piece in the bowl until it was almost dry, but the bottom was still a little bit flexible. I gently took it out of the mold and slightly flattened an area on the bottom for it to sit. Again, I splattered underglaze for a festive look. The spiral of this design is so contemporary and unique that I'm sure it will be a fun conversation piece. The third project is on the wheel. I started with three pounds of clay, flattening it outward with the palm of my hand, then pulling up the walls and rounding the rim. I smoothed out the inside with a red rib. I'm not going to trim the bottom, as I need to alter it when it's freshly thrown, so now's the only time I can trim that extra weight away. I trimmed the sides and angled the bottom edge to eliminate that bulk. I then created a swirl with my finger to the middle of the bowl. I placed that aside for now. 
I threw a tinier bowl with less than a pound of clay. I also created a spiral in the center of this bowl. Again, I didn't trim the bottom as I needed it to be flat. I wired this off. I replaced the big bowl to the wheel head. For this design, I pushed the side of the bowl to the inside all the way down. Now here's a replay from another angle. Now you'll see stress marks along the edge of the fold. I used a sponge to wet that down, then reinforce that stressed part and smooth the rest of the flap flat with my fingers. I scored both the flat spot and the bottom of the small bowl and attached them together. I smoothed the edges of the bowl and made sure it was round. I rolled a coil and placed it along the outer edge of the bowl. Along the inside of the bowl, I worked the flaps around the sides of the small bowl to eliminate the gaps between the two pieces, making them appear as one unit. Now here's what I made earlier with the same decoration. I like the lines where those two bowls intersect and how they unite so the smaller bowl becomes the focal point. Finally, for the fourth project, I again started with that same freshly thrown big bowl as the third project. I also threw a small bowl where the wall was shorter than the height of the big bowl. Using my needle tool and starting parallel to the smaller bowl, I began to cut into the wall of the big bowl, working away from it and slanting the cut towards the top rim. I wet the clay along the rim of the small bowl, then curled that cut clay around and overlapped the wall of the small bowl. I attach the two, fitting the joints together. I use coils along the back side and front side to secure them. I wet the clay down along the cut of the big bowl edge and rounded it. I rounded off that cut strip. Here's one I made earlier. The rounded attachment of that strip to the center bowl creates that swirled effect that's mesmerizing and makes you want to spin it around so you can see it from all angles. These bowls would be fun to use at any holiday or festive occasion. You can also use them as decorative centerpieces for any table. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio. I then gave a middle finger to the middle of the bowl. <laughs>